morning. It's Tuesday, April 21st, and it's a beautiful day to plant some corn. Are you excited to plant some corn, Lizzie? I am too. So the first item on the agenda this morning, I think I'm going to just go ahead and pull the rest of these weights off of here. Um, I was smarter this time and parked the tractor far enough away that I can get the 950 in here with that boom pull lift to pull them off and hopefully set them over there so that I don't have to wrestle them very far manually. Um, I mean, 220 pounds is a chunk of weight, but it's manageable. However, these things are super awkward um, and kind of prone to pinch your fingers or toes or whatever. So um, I think hooking a chain on is going to be the smart move for sure. Um, my thought was that I maybe wanted a little bit of weight on the front end to make sure that I had good uh, steering control so that the auto steer would work well. Um, but since the bolts aren't really working for just using a few, and I don't really want the whole rack. I think that probably running none is going to be what I'm going to try first at least. And if I have problems, we'll put it back. Um, with this planter, there's no weight transfer onto the tractor. So I don't have to worry about um, taking weight off the front end, going down the road or anything like that. So probably I don't need any. Um, but we'll just have to kind of see how it acts. And we are all clear. Um, so I ended up taking the four off in one chunk. Um, I was able to get hooked back. I didn't think that I could pick up four on the end of the boom without breaking something, um, but I thought this one probably would be okay. And it worked out really well, actually. Um, the tractor was pretty light on the front end, so I had to do a little bit of steering with the brakes. Um, if you haven't been around agricultural equipment, usually you'll have a right brake and left brake separate. Um, so if you want to make a turn, you can brake the inside tire and that'll help spin you around if you don't have traction on the front end. Um, but uh, got it moved over here. Um, I may have to start the tractor up again to get the chain loose enough to uh, undo the hook down there. 2,200 pounds and six bolts should be enough to keep those blocks from floating away if we flood, right? All right, so I just did a uh, functionality test on the section control, and I'm getting a ton of glare because I'm staring into the sun. Um, but uh, basically, just did a figure, eight, half of a figure eight, we'll call it. Um, so basically, like these sections would have turned off as we overlapped and then come back on. Um, so I was able to just look back and uh, watch the wheels on top of the drums there to make sure that they went down and up when they should, and that seemed to happen. We're getting close. Uh, I've got a few minor things to check over and need to grab some spare parts and tools and stuff like that. Uh, but I think we're getting pretty close, so um, hopefully we'll be loading up the planter here uh, in the next half hour, 45 minutes, and go put some seed in the ground. We're in the first field that I'm going to plant and got the planter filled with seed. Um, just doing some final tuning here, kind of just running out across the field a little bit. Um, so one of the things that we had some debate about when we were setting the zeros, zero depth on the row units, we always kind of try to keep track of any like settings that matter, I guess. And we'll write that in the front of a, the manual. Um, and originally I think it was like five and seven eighths and then that was crossed out and it was four and seven eighths. And I think I've always ran it at the four and seven eighths or whatever the, the number that was had been changed to. Um, but when we zeroed the row units, uh, it seemed like getting the discs and the firming points to touch right maybe worked a little bit better with more height on the front. So I'm kind of trying to assess whether the bar is level, like whether we're tilted for or forward or back um, based on like this being parallel to the ground essentially. So I've got a, a straight edge here that I'm just kind of going off the bar and then measuring down and it seemed like it was too high on the front. Um, so I took the stops back out and I'm going to try it again. However, there's a couple other things that I want to adjust um, while I'm kind of playing with things. Uh, I think I want the row cleaners just a little bit lower. I don't want them to move too much dirt because I don't want to uh, get that residue totally uh, or like create a trench that will cause a washing problem. Uh, but I do want to get enough of the residue out of the way that it doesn't end up in the seed trench. Um, so I think I need to get those set a little bit more aggressively. Um, Hopefully, if things work right, we're going to mostly be planting 
on top of the anhydrous strip here so there hopefully won't be a lot of residue where the row units are running or where the actual seat is going anyway um, but I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out because I've never done it that way before. Um, I also think I maybe have the depth a little bit deeper than it needs to be um, for the seating so I'm going to back those off a little bit. Um, I'll have to check once I'm actually putting seat in the ground because I'm just trying it um, dry right now. I don't even have the fans turned on. Um, but I'll check the depth once I actually start running and see kind of where things are at. But it's kind of hard to tell a lot of times on the indros because it'll be the soil there will be enough more packed down that you have a hard time telling exactly how deep you're going to be going once you get out into the, the broader part of the field. Um, so probably I'll kind of get it reasonably close and then put the indros on and when I go across um, to get to the other end um, we'll be able to hopefully get a little bit better idea where things are at. I'm trying to show you how this is done. Um, basically there's a spring piece here that you have to push forward that locks into some flats on the knob. Um, so I have to push and turn at the same time and that doesn't really work very well. Um, we're trying to hold a camera. Um, so we're going to go through and do that on all 12 rows and then I'm going to go through and adjust the row cleaners um, which I think it looked like there was a line probably one slot above so I think that's maybe where I ran for corn planting and where they're at now um, so I had them lower down when I was working on replacing stuff on the row units um, but I put them back where they were but I think since I planted some 30 inch beans with this last year I think I raised them up a little bit to keep them from plugging up with stocks um, so I think probably that notch is maybe where I actually want them um, but I'm gonna get them lowered down and kind of see how they look maybe I'll just do a few rows to start with and see how that looks uh, before I go clear across the planter okay uh, I got the row cleaners adjusted and we're backed up here to start the round hopefully um, Gonna drop the left marker. Uh, we're gonna find out if the monitor works because I haven't actually put any seed through it yet. Um, so when I drop the planter, you should see the air wheels are lift up on the top there. So we'll see what happens. And our marker is dropping. It'll go the rest of the way out once we start moving. get out and see if everything looks like the depth is right. This is probably not going to be super informative um, because we mostly no-till and we're on the Indros right now. Uh, we loaded a bunch of trucks here so I chiseled this Christmas day I believe um, and then ran through here with a disc and field cultivator. Um, but I want to kind of dig gently here and try to find the seeds without disturbing them too much so we can tell how deep they are. There we go. So we're pretty good on depth. Maybe we want to be just a little bit deeper. I think I am going to lower those a little bit or maybe I'll just find another seat here first and see. Or maybe check some other rows. Should be another one probably right in here somewhere. there which it looks like we're between an inch and a half and two inches I think so we're not too bad um, we're in the moisture which is what we want let's check another row and just see how it's doing if I can find the seed here somewhere maybe I knocked it out oh there's one So I'm going about up to my second knuckle is sort of what we're eyeballing it at for the time being. So I'm just kind of seeing if that top of my second knuckle is roughly even with the top of the dirt adjacent to the trench. Let's see if we can find another. There's 
So that's a that's a refuge seed. So since this is traded corn, there's a certain percentage that's uh, conventional or doesn't have the the insect trait, um, and it'll be colored differently on the seed treatment. Um, so that's that's right at two inches, I would say. So maybe we're okay on depth for the most part, or maybe I'll just leave it where it's at for the time being, and then. Uh, reassess once we get out in the field. I'm going to have to do a little bit of digging to check and make sure my row clutches are working the way that I want them to. Um, so maybe we'll go ahead and get the indros put on and then uh, kind of see how it looks once we get out into the no-till part. I got that first headland or indro pass on and just turned the corner here, stopped, got out, kind of dug a little bit more. It looks like the depth is about where I want it, so I think I'm going to just go with that for the time being. Um, so I'm going to get 60 feet, so two passes on each end, um, and then I'm going to do one pass along the fence here and then I've got a guidance line set up on the road so I should be able to start at the road and then plant this way and plant into that the first pass or the pass that I'm doing right now um, and have everything be perfectly straight if the RTK all works correctly. Uh, the other thing that I noticed when I got to this end of the field is that I think my neighbor broadcast some cereal rye last fall and must have been either didn't drive very accurately or the wind was blowing towards me because I appear to have rye 20 or 25 feet into my field in spots, which is kind of disappointing, but par for the course. So I just put on the second set of endros on the east end here. Um, so I planted straight into where I came around the curve on the corner here before. So I'm going to do some digging and see if the row shutoffs work where they were supposed to. Um, so we can kind of see there's a row right there. And a seed on top of the ground that probably got stirred up by the second row unit coming through. Um, but I need to find my outside row. Maybe that is my outside row. It's maybe the gauge field track and then this would be... Yep, I think that is the outside row. So right here is an intersection. So we're going to dig back. And I want to find seeds. There's one there. I maybe knocked one out earlier somewhere. Um, so that's good as long as I don't have seeds up here. Okay, so we maybe have a little bit too much overlap at the moment. I think there was a bad spot in the cutoff wheel on row one. Okay, so I don't see any more here, so I think we're... So we're cutting off at least within a couple of feet, which is probably good enough to be honest. Um, I would like it a little better than that, um, but let's check. We kind of follow that same row. So this is going to be row three. Okay, so there's one. But I'm not sure if that's from the first pass or this row, so we'll kind of keep digging this way and see what we find. And honestly, since I was digging on row one over there, there's going to be a little overlap on one, and row two would probably be the one that would be perfect if it was set right, um, because you're going to have a little bit of overlap. I think that's the same seat that I dug up a minute ago. Um, because you're not going to cut off until row two crosses, and it would cross later than row one. So I'm not finding any seats here, so I think that's promising. We at least have one, you know, within eight or ten inches there. We assume that that one came from this row. If it didn't, then we're perfect. Um, so I'll do this in a few more spots, see how things look. Um, and then when I make the first straight pass where I'm hitting the end rows at 90 degrees, um, we'll get out and dig some there too and make sure that everything's right. Um, I'm using the same timings that I had last year with the other tractor and the other monitor, which should be the same. Uh, I mean, like, as long as the dimensions are all correct. Um, but since it's a new configuration, I want to make sure about that. We are getting some corn planted. Uh, downshift to go across this little swale here, I guess we'll call it. Uh, running auto steer on an AB line trying to plan on top of the uh, anhydrous tracks. Uh, it seems to be working decent. It's not perfect, but I thought that it probably wasn't going to be because it seemed like the anhydrous part kind of pulls to the side a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if the RTK is 100% perfect. I think the planter might track a little bit off. 
rough depending on the side slope of where we're at. Um, but it seems to be, everything seems to be working pretty much like it should be, so that's good news, I guess. Uh, I did screw around a little bit digging to make sure that things were turning on and off when they were supposed to for the row shutoffs. Um, and they may not be exact, but I think they're close enough that I'm going to live with it for the time being. Um, it depends, since the way that this planter works, your cutoff point is like, I think, five or six seeds before where the seed would normally release. Um, so it's also dependent on how fast the planter is traveling, how much time you need uh, before and after, so that could be a factor also. Um, it seemed like the first couple times that I checked it, it was off maybe a little bit, uh, but I think I might have been driving slower than I had it set up before. Get a little view off the front here. We've done about 11 acres so far. I don't know if the screen will show up because it's going to be a lot darker than the outside. Um, but everything seems to be going fairly smoothly. Um, I put hopefully about the exact amount of seed in the planter. So this is going to be kind of the test. Since this field is nice and square and we know the acre is pretty exact, um, I should be able to tell if I'm getting on the population that I want. Um, the planter monitor tells me the population, but it's not always 100% accurate. It tends to kind of read a little bit low, it seems. Um, so I kind of want to try to get a little bit of a read on how we're coming out um, so that I uh, make sure that I have things adjusted right. Um, so we're not getting doubles or skips and we're getting the right amount of seed on and that I'm not gonna have a whole bunch left over or run out before I'm finished planting. Uh, I just finished this field. So we're gonna see how he came out on seed. Uh, I'm gonna turn the blower fan off and we're gonna go open up the hoppers. And Hopefully, there's about the same amount in each, and there's not very much in either. So there's just a little bit of seed left in the shoot there, which is about right. Let's see if this one is similar. Looks like money. I should have had about a half a bag total, so that would be a quarter of a bag in each. And I think that that's probably all down in the drum, or mostly down in the drum. Uh, so even though the monitor was showing 30 to 31 most of the time, 30 to 31,000 plants per acre, um, I actually was planning more than that. We should be planning about 32.2. Um, and I think that that is what we put on based on the seed that's left. So, good news. Fold this up and uh, go fill it up with some more seed and start the next field. Um, the next field is a little bigger. I doubt if I'll get it finished today, but I do have pretty good running there. It's a half mile long. Um, so hopefully at least get a decent chunk of it knocked out. Yeah, it's about five o'clock and we're running in the second field. Uh, I got the planter refilled or the rest of this variety at least added. Um, not clear full, but kind of try to spread out our uh, risk among a few varieties to make sure that we don't have one variety have a bad year and have a complete disaster. Um, so in the other field, it seemed like I was not perfect on my uh, guidance, even though with RTK we should be sub-inch accuracy. Um, and it didn't seem like I was getting that. And I think that that's because the planter is pulling to the side just a little bit. Uh, I talked to Dad and he thought he had had the markers adjusted asymmetrical when he was farming. Um, so I dialed in about two inches of left offset. Um, actually 0.17 feet because the monitor has it in feet and I figured it's actually 166666 but I figured you know within a hundredth or two is probably good enough for agriculture especially when I don't exactly know if that's the right number anyway um, so thus far it seems like it looks a lot better I haven't actually got out and measured much because I'm only on like the fourth pass and I kind of screwed up the second pass because um, I planted along the road 
using an AB line, but then I did the the Indros um, just off the last pass, which is called Smart Path, I believe, something like that. Um, but I didn't get it changed back to the AB, so instead of being instead of the second pass being on the AB line, it was actually going off the first pass. Which, although the first pass was on the AB line and it should have been pretty close, so I don't know if I want to, you know, assume that that's perfect. Um, so I'm probably going to kind of get out either at the end of this pass or on the next one and uh, do a little bit of measuring on the guest rows and see if it looks like it's close. But I'm optimistic at this point that uh, we've made significant improvement, but don't know. Um, it will be a little bit of an adventure to see when stuff comes up. How it looks and if it looks like the tractor or the satellites uh, can drive straighter than I could with a marker. Probably they can, but it does seem like we're kind of uh, waggling a little bit across the field so I don't know that it's going to be aero straight perfect. Things are going smoothly though so overall getting some things done. Conditions seem good. Um, it's pretty dusty on the top but there's moisture not very far down. There's a chance of rain here in a couple days. Today's Tuesday, so it's Thursday night. And usually the first 48 hours are kind of the important uh, time frame to make sure that the seed doesn't absorb cold water. Uh, so I think the stuff today should be pretty safe. I'm not sure, kind of see what the chances of rain look like as we get closer um, and decide how hard to run tomorrow. But conditions seem good. And I think the, most of the medium term forecasts that I've seen are pretty warm and dry, um, which probably means that we're better off to get seed in the ground sooner than later, uh, unless that looks like it's going to change. We're closing in at 8 o'clock and the sun's going down. Uh, I'm not going to get this finish, this field finished, I don't think, or I'm not going to run after dark long enough to get it finished at least. Uh, I'm probably going to do another 10 or 15 acres. Um, and then we'll have too much left to do tomorrow morning. Uh, at least that's kind of the game plan. Uh, things have gone pretty smoothly though. Uh, I think the uh, adjusting that left-right offset has helped the pass-to-pass -pass, uh, accuracy on the planter. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure if it's perfect. Um, I don't know if it is possible to be perfect with a trailing implement like this. Uh, and since we have a lot of contour rows and stuff, normally mounted stuff, mounted implements don't really work very well uh, because they don't follow around the contour very well or they put a lot of stress on the three point and stuff. The probably just shy of 100 acres today, which for not starting very early, that's pretty decent by my standards, I guess. So we'll call that a wrap for the time being. Hopefully take some more video tomorrow.